Well, we've been catching plenty of fish already here at Bishop's Bowl, and uh, I'm gonna show you a great tactic that works really well in the summer. Nice and aggressive, really positive, really simple to fish as well, but deadly effective. And uh, I'm gonna show you some nice tips on getting the most out of a, a sort of refined bomb setup in the summer months. I'm getting a few little dips and taps on a tip already, so there's plenty of fish out there, which is what we want to see. Um, first things first is, is we're fishing bomb and pellet, and it's what size pellets. Now, a lot of people automatically go for eight mil pellets, but I think on these sort of smaller, sort of medium size venues, a uh, six mil pellet can be really, really good. It's perfect for fishing sort of 16 to sort of 20, 25 meters out. But I think with six mil pellets, you can be a lot more aggressive with the feed, really get them grubbing around. And um, I just think you get more bites, you can feed a lot more bait, you can really get them foraging. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of closer to what you'd be feeding on the pole as well anyway. So, so six mil pellets um, are surprisingly good and on lots of venues. So don't think you have to use eight mil pellets. A lot of people think it's bomb and eight mil pellet everywhere you go. Don't ignore using six mil pellets. On some venues, I know they lash in four mil pellets and fish a bomb over the top of that. But if in doubt, I do like fishing six mil pellets, especially on a, on a nice little lake like this. We're on Marsh's Lake at Bishop's Bowl. Absolutely perfect. And I think I can create a nice big area, give me a nice area to aim for and, and feed plenty of bait. It gives me a nice little sort of target area to, to, to hit. If I was feeding eight mils, I wouldn't want to be pinging too many in. I'd only be feeding, you know, three to six pellets. Whereas with, with six mils, I can really sort of lash them in, you know, 20 pellets at a, at a time. And it's absolutely perfect. You get a lot more noise, a lot more attraction and really get them sort of um, hoovering up on the bottom, which is what you want them to do. You, you can't really overfeed on the bomb. Uh, where if, you, if you was pole fishing or float fishing, you'd be foul looking the fish, but because you're, you're fishing, you're ledgering over the top. You're just waiting for them to hook themselves. So you can overfeed on the bomb, um, where you have to be a lot more um, careful overfeeding on the pole in, in the open water. So yeah, you can be really aggressive and I just like feeding at this time of year. So uh, happy days all round. Ooh. <laughs> I love the bites on this. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, so yeah, don't be lured into thinking you must fish eight mil pellets or one size of pellet. Bring a few sizes of pellets and try different ones on the day. Keep the fish guessing, but I like fishing six mil pellets on the bomb, especially on venues like this. And uh, the fish certainly seem to be uh, obliging today. Oh dear. Well, it's fair to say it's fishing exceptionally well and uh, they've been lapping up those pellets. So I, I'm, I'm surprised how good it is. I literally, it's in there a minute and it's going round. So uh, it's definitely working. So as soon as I've netted this, I think we better look at the rig. <laughs> Lovely looking fish in here as well. <laughs> nice big mouths on them. And they pull a bit. You in, let's have a look at the rig. Well, the next tip is all about the bomb size, really. I've gone for a nice little inline pellet bomb, seven and a half gram, makes a lovely little plop, not a big, loud 
fish scaring splash which can potentially happen um, especially on nice calm sort of hot flat calm days you don't want a big splash you just want a nice little plop and um, a bit closer to the sound of your feed going in so uh, these inline bombs they come in five seven and a half and ten grams i've gone for the middle size i can always drop it down or or or, or, or um, scale up to the 10 gram if i need to but it's a it's about right i'm only chucking sort of 16 to sort of 22 meters something like that today and it's absolutely ideal nice little plop i can still see it in the air and, and see where it's landing as well so it's, it's just a nice sort of almost like a stealth bomb really so um but that's free running up up and down the line on the um on the submerge xd eight pound line which is 023 nice strong no nonsense durable stuff we could be looking 10 pound fish on this and you want something nice and strong and being a nice sort of matte brown sort of line as well i always think it cuts through the surface tension nicely which is important with a light bomb you need your line to sink well a heavy bomb will sink your line whereas a lighter bomb doesn't sink the line so quickly so uh, so that's important it's just a nice brown sinking mono so that's that's what you want just no nonsense durable stuff and um yeah so that's free running up and down the line semi fixed by the bead so we can add and subtract hook lengths at this end nice and easily so you've just got that little bit of um, resistance to help set the hook. And um, so yeah, nice, nice, absolutely sort of perfect sort of size. That inline helps promote south hooking as well, rather than a, um, like an RLC bomb or something like that. that it's direct to the fish, so you, you are promoting south hooking. It'll just sit there nice. It's got a slight, slightly flattened profile as well, so they won't roll. Absolutely ideal. So that's the lead anyway, nice and nice and small and refined. And you don't need an, a, a big long rod for, the, for this sort of game either. So I, I really like my 10 foot Horizon commercial feeder rod. I could use the bomb rod, but I'm after predominantly carp and I just class the feeder rod as more of a summer rod and the bomb rod as a, a winter or, or, um, or an F1 style, style rod. So don't let the name of the rod put you off. I use the feeder rod for bomb fishing as well and it's perfect for a venue like this. I like nice short rods, so 10 foot, you could use nine foot. You don't need a really long rod for this sort of game. So yeah, 10 foot commercial feeder matched up. I've got the Ethos 3500 reel there with eight pound mono on it. Absolutely ideal, no nonsense sort of tackle, but perfect for venues like this. Well, that wafter's still on the hook and it's good to go. I'll happily cast that out again. It's no slime or anything on there. So I'll cast that out again and try and catch another fish. But we'll have a look at hook baits now and just see. So 78% uh, of the time, I'll just match the hatch, put on the hook what you're feeding. So I'm feeding six mils. I do like a little glug of fish oil on them as well. I just think the extra slick and the extra attraction, it just gives them extra little boost. And I just think it pin pricking up and down will help draw the fish down to your hook bait. So I do like to put on, if I'm feeding six mils, I put a six mil on the hook, but I do like double six mil as well. These bands are brilliant. You can stretch them and you can put, you can see that hole there already. You can put two, two pellets in one band. So double six mil has been particularly good, but then I've just swapped to a single wafter and that's been really good as well but i have got i've just got a variety of hook bait sometimes especially on the clearer venues a nice bright hook bait can really stand out well so i've got some fluorescent band and wafters there as well six mil or eight mils generally do do the business but also um I, i've got no no problem putting an eight mil hook pellet on as well to stand out two sixes or an eight mil a, a standout hook bait just seems to help um, obviously it's more of a target bait as well, but I also think the fish find it harder to deal with. So they have to, they struggle to eject it. So that's why you, you, you hook the fish a bit more. Um, and I'd never go to a venue like this without some red pellets as well. So, uh, I just think that that nice deep sort of red color is a nice, um, it's just something about red pellets when you're fishing out on a bomb that it, it works and uh, uh so many people will tell you the same so uh so it's definitely worth a try trying a red six mil or a red eight mil pellet over the top but yeah a wafter's been doing the trick today um or the, well a wafter's just done the trick for that last fish so we'll go out and give it another another cast and see if it wasn't a fluke
Wait, <laughs> there we are. Straight back out with that yellow wafter, and we've got the best fish of the day. <sighs> Cracking. Yeah, so that's proof if ever needs be to bring a selection of hook baits and uh, don't be scared to ring and change your hook baits because it could result in a, a lovely little fish like that. Perhaps the biggest question I get asked when bomb fishing is all about the hook length. There's not many variables really once you take into account the weight of the bomb and what you're putting on the hook. The hook length itself is perhaps the, the, the thing you can change the most. So, um, and with this sort of setup, I've got a lovely quick release system. So I can add and subtract hook lengths to suit and keep varying it. I can have different length hook lengths. And I suppose it's, it's, it's the length of the hook length that's the most um, crucial thing to weigh up. And a lot of it is on the day. What I will say is, if you're in doubt, put a foot hook length on, 12 inches, 30 centimeters, <laughs> whether you're metric or imperial, start at 12 inches. And that just seems to be a good, a good um, sort of starting distance for carp and F1s. Um, what I have done today though, I've dropped it down to about eight inches. Um, the fish are on the bait today. You can almost tell by your quiver tip shaking that they're, they're picking it up and dropping it sometimes. And by shortening it, the bites have been absolutely savage. So don't be scared to go really short. I know people that go four inch long on a hook length, but generally for me, probably six, seven inches is probably the shortest I go. I always think there's a load of silt on a lot of these venues, especially chucking into the middle of the lake like I am today. So if, that's, if that bomb sinks into the silt, you still want your hook bait to be above the silt. So I try not to go too short on the hook length, unless I know it's a really, really hard bottom, sort of chucking up to an island or something. But in open water, sort of eight inches to 12 inches is a good, is a good length. It's a really deep lake you might go up to as much as two foot, 18 inches, something like that. But in my experience, even on the really deep lakes, going nice and short can bring you, bring you some great bites, especially with six mil pellets, which is what I'm using today. So really experiment with the hook lengths. Start off at 12 inch, but don't be scared to go shorter because the bites can be really, really savage when, when, when they're having it like they are today. Now the hook length itself is made of O20 power micron. I try not to go any lighter than that. There's big carp in this place. You could go heavier, you could go thicker. There's an argument for a nice rigid hook length that's gonna sort of prevent the fish spitting the hook length out. But I just find an O20 hook length is about right. It's strong enough for carp and it's still got a bit of suppleness and everything there. But some people go it even thicker and I, I get that, but I just find O20 is nice and strong and it just does the job. And finishing it off, I've got a size 16 MXC4. I'm using six mil pellets. I quite like a 16. It just seems the optimum size for six mil pellets. And the MXC4, although it's a small lock, it's really strong, won't open out. And I still think I can fish one or two six mils in the band. Uh, I've got the medium super stretch bait band there. And it's just nice for, for six mil pellets. If I was fishing uh, predominantly eight mil pellets, I wouldn't hesitate to go much, much bigger, um, a 12, even a 10, if, it, if the fishery allows it. I just think a big hook with eight mil pellets works really well. But when you've got six mil pellets, I think they pick it up and blow it out a lot more. And I just think that size 16 just seems to work really nice with six mil pellets. Well, my final tip is all about feeding. And um, I think you can be quite generous with six mil pellets. So I've baited it up. I'm gonna try a wafter again now. And um, I like to feed first and then cast. It gives you something to aim for. 
Um, and I like to be quite aggressive, what I class as sort of burst feeding, feed two big bursts of feed and then stop feeding. Um, we're not waggler fishing, we're not trying to fish up in the water, we're trying to push the fish down. So give them, a, give them two big pouches of bait, sometimes three. So we've got a nice area to aim for. And if it's fishing well, I aim for the middle of that. If it's um, fishing hard, I'll, I'll aim for the back of the feed. But that's it, we've, we've created that nice area and by feeding and casting, it gives you something to aim for. On a lot of these venues, there's, there's nothing to aim for in open water. So the best thing you can aim for is the splash of your bait. So that's why I don't cast and then feed. But yeah, so we, we, we're creating a load of commotion, ringing the dinner bell, and then stop feeding. Wait a couple of minutes at least before you feed again. If you feed too regularly, you're just gonna bring the fish up in the water. We're trying to push them down and really get them chomping on the bottom. So if, it, if, they, if for any reason they do start showing and stuff, then I wouldn't hesitate to pick a waggler rod up. But generally the way I'm feeding today is to push them down, keep them down and really attack it. You can really feed heavily with this style of fishing. If you was float fishing over the top, you'd be foul looking fish. But we're, we're fishing on the bottom with a sort of south hooking method. So we can be very, very aggressive at times. So yeah, bring a couple of bags of pellets as well. You might get through them. But the other little trick I will say, I don't know if I've said it already, but you can put a little bit of oil in your pellets. Whoop, that's on. <laughs> put a bit of oil in your pellets and that will flatten the water as well when there's a particular ripple on the day. And that gives you something to aim for again. So it will just flatten that little bit of ripple and give you a nice little slick to aim for. And everything's attracting and bringing the fish in. But yeah, that worked, didn't it? <laughs> so yeah, that's my final tip. Don't be scared to give them some bait. Feed a couple of pouches and then cast into the middle of it. And uh, hopefully the, the fish will come as quickly as this one. <laughs>great little session at Bishop's Bowl. Hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully I've given you five top tips to improve your bomb fishing. And uh, yeah, go out and give them a try. I'm sure they'll put a lot more fish in your net. See if he'll let me hold him up. Yeah, so they're my top five tips for bomb fishing. Go out and give them a try.